my um, uh, what I was asked to talk today uh, about is uh, the connection between the new waterway and the city of Rotterdam in historical perspective. I'm a historian. Uh, I work uh, with Paul van der Laar uh, at the history department in Rotterdam, uh, but also with Carola Hein uh, at uh, Delft and with the Center for Port City Futures. Um, I'm uh, doing my PhD right now in Rotterdam, and this is about the, the networks of port entrepreneurs, of uh, people at the municipality who reconstructed Rotterdam after the Second World War. But when I started my research, I kind of found out, okay, the, the reconstruction of the Second World War starts before the Second World War. Uh, and the new waterway actually has a, a very important cultural value for this reconstruction. So together with uh, Paul van der Laar, uh, I wrote an article about the iconification of an infrastructure, uh, uh, Rotterdam's new waterway, uh, but also um, uh, an article about Kaland and his struggles to get his plans through. So if you're interested in that, please uh, read these articles, because today I will talk a little bit about uh, the 1930s as a pivotal moment in the cultural imagination of the new waterway in Rotterdam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here is a timeline, and I'd like to kind of um, uh, divide the, the timeline of, of uh, the new waterway into three uh, separate eras. So the first is are the plans, uh, the laws, uh, the first spade by the Herr Parent, all these, these monumental moments in the history, the first ship, of course, but also the trouble and criticism. And in 1902, Peter Kaland, the engineer, dies, and uh, the, 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 the reputation of the waterway is still kind of uh, uh, doubtful, doubtful. Then there is a period uh, that we will talk about today, uh, and after the World War, you see there are three 100-year anniversaries for every uh, thing. So the national law had its 100-year anniversary, uh, the first bait had its 100-year uh, anniversary, and also the first ship had its 100-year anniversary. So today, with the 150-year anniversary, uh, of course, we uh, again are celebrating this plan. But how did this plan come into the cultural imagination of Rotterdam as something to celebrate? So uh, today we'll be looking at uh, the 1930s uh, as a moment of, of uh, pivoting. Uh, well, in 1907 already, uh, the Kaland mon monument was erected in the center of Rotterdam. Um, and um, so this was also a, quite a, a pivotal moment. In 1930, uh, Gidding's diorama, uh, what you see here, uh, underneath, it's the, the quality of the picture is not so good, I'm sorry, but uh, it's, it's, it was also a very monumental work, meters long, and um, it, it kind of showed the connection between Rotterdam and its new waterway, and it was exhibited at the World Exhibition in Antwerp in 1930. But another super important uh, moment in time was the establishment of the Port Authority. So in 1932, um, uh, people of the municipality, uh, um, inspired by uh, entrepreneurs of the port, uh, established a port authority a municipal department that kind of took all the, the fragmented uh, work on, on the port out of the hands of different municipal departments and made this port authority. This was kind of a modernization of governance at the time. And one of the goals of this municipal department was to, um, to kind of invent a purposeful port politics. So why is it important to talk about this port authority that they started to modernize communications as well? They started to talk about propaganda. They started to talk about advertisements. And why did they do this? Uh, because this propaganda, um, um, uh, the, uh, the, the, first, uh, the first thing is propaganda is no longer an, one idea among many to maintain or find employment for the port and its facilities. It increasingly appears to be the means par excellence. We have to remember that propaganda had a slightly different meaning back then than it does now. Um, a bit less ideologically loaded, but still. Um, and the goal was to um, process and recruit clients and... Um, uh, come in contact with countries who must be drawn into the interests of Rotterdam or who are in danger of being lost as a customer to our port. 
Yet, with the newly established Port uh, Authority, there was not, not enough money to, to uh, also raise a marketing department for this Port Authority. So, uh, some of the, the, um, the, the people behind the Port Authority, thought, uh, among whom was the, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, thought, let's, let's do it ourselves. Let's uh, make a foundation to, to get this uh, advertisement, this propaganda started. So they established in 1934 uh, the Foundation for Port Interests. Uh, and this group of men, they, they were mostly um, port entrepreneurs. They um, actively invited newspapers and magazines to come over to Rotterdam. They wined them and dined them. And they, they asked them to write nice articles about Rotterdam. They also advertised. They thought about exhibitions that they could um, they could um, uh, uh, exhibit at. Um, they organized days of the ports, uh, for example, in 1935. They also expected uh, an international uh, audience, so they also translated the, the booklets into other languages. They made this beautiful magazine, uh, the Port of Rotterdam, developments, you, you, utilities and economic development um, and you see uh, the mouth of the new waterway Rotterdam's connection to the sea. However, we have to remember that this were the 1930s, so it was a crisis, the Great Depression uh, was spe specifically harsh on the city of Rotterdam and uh, one of the publications of the the port interests foundation was uh, rotterdam in distress it was a radio speech by one of the aldermen and it kind of uh, made the connection between rotterdam and the national government it said the national government has to come in to help rotterdam um, And one of the, the members of, of this commission, of this, this, uh, this um, uh, foundation, uh, Engelbrecht, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, he was kind of a history buff and he had written about the new waterway before. And he kind of saw this parallel between uh, the difficulty, difficult time in the 1950s, 1960s, 18, uh, 1850s, 1860s. Han already mentioned the reasons for the new waterway. Uh, being established, um, but the, he saw this parallel uh, of, of the national government coming in to help Rotterdam to make its uh, waterway uh, uh, saleable again, and uh, thus they used this as kind of a success story of the national government investing in Rotterdam with the uh, new waterway as a kind of propaganda. I mean, we did we did it before in a time of distress. Why not not do it again to get us out of uh, this particular crisis? So the new waterway exhibition, uh, they set it up and it drew nationwide attention. Uh, they um, kind of made. Uh, oh, I'm going forward in my own presentation. I'm not here. Um, you see the the temporary. Uh, house that housed the, the celebrations in 1866. Uh, you see a picture of Kaland and you see also the plans that he uh, made and uh, also a very important aspect of uh, the, the rhetorics of this celebration was uh, the values of the new waterway that kind of also paralleled the values that they wanted to mirror. Um, it's interesting to see which elements of the story were repeated and found their way into the narrative. Uh, so the idea of, uh, of growing from a regional port to a world port, so the global port status. Uh, at that time, Rotterdam was, uh, was already the largest port on the continent, but they wanted to grow even more. But also, uh, the waterway meant a strengthening of civic power and confidence. And these are the words again of this uh, Engelbrecht, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, in times of adversity, moreover, an ever more deeply rooted awareness of the tight bond 
of our port city with our country in its global relations. And in all, almost all the, com uh, the communications, you see these three elements. So the city, the country, so the national government also uh, benefiting from the new waterway, but also needing to invest in the new waterway uh, to, in order to safeguard the global relations of Rotterdam and the nation. So this is pretty much the, the narrative that was spun in the 1930s, but it really uh, so, so has sown a seed in, into the, the public imagination. And also when Rotterdam is destructed in the Second World War, uh, the waterway really takes a big role in the, um, in the reconstruction rhetorics. For example, with the game, uh, I mean, the sorry, yeah, the uh, <laughs> destruction and the, the stadium game in, in the Kuip, in the Feyenoord Stadium, which kind of reenacted uh, the whole war and the liberation. But also on an economic level, so um, this, uh, this foundation for Port Interests uh, published a little booklet about the Rotterdam Rhine Ruhr connection and um, they also uh, uh, um, pointed back to, to hydraulic engineer Kaland, uh, who came to the rescue of the mass city in 1858. Another point of celebration, of course. Uh, the stroke of genius whereby Kaland, as it were, became the creator of modern Rotterdam. And also, uh, J. A. Ringers, a very important uh, uh, figure in the reconstruction of Rotterdam and in the Netherlands as a whole, he was fascinated by Kaland. He wrote a little book about him in 1953, Kaland and the meaning of his work for Rotterdam. And he said, as with a finger of immortality, a line has been drawn on the map of the Netherlands, which points from Rotterdam to the sea and which will forever remind us of the creator of the waterway of the actual founder of new Rotterdam. So in 1967, I saw this picture this week and I thought, this is amazing. I never heard of it, but um, with, with the expansion of the ports uh, of Rotterdam uh, and also the important role that uh, Rotterdam came to have uh, in the petrochemical uh, industries, um, the, the new waterway needed more uh, draft, uh, a bigger draft for uh, oil ships to come in. Uh, and again, the call was to the Dutch government to um, to come in and invest in this uh, in the dredging procedure that needed to happen. We see a very nice uh, um, uh, imagination of this this work, but also a group uh, um, study group of psychology who thought this is so important and the national government was was hesitating. We have to support our city and our mayor to make this happen. So they went onto the sea and already started dredging the kind of the ditch that led to the new waterway. Two minutes, yes. Uh, and they said uh, in an interview, we want to show that our mayor is capable of finishing the ditch in time, uh, but that a large number of citizens is, worry, uh, is worried about the state holding off its support to this project. So this kind of uh, shows the, the citizens uh, relationship with the new waterway, but we also, uh, is important to remember uh, that uh, the expansion of the port had a lot of downsides, pollution, um, um, and for example, and these, this is a photo of protest in Vlaardingen, actually, this is one of the cities that is also on the new waterway, but uh, didn't always get reap the benefits of the new waterway. Still, uh, the narrative of Kaland as the founder of uh, Rotterdam's wealth and of the waterway as kind of the artery of, uh, of the Netherlands, as Mayor Abu Talib called it once, was set in the cultural imagination. So today, oh yeah, sorry. We also celebrate uh, this with 150 years forward. So the values of progress and connectivity and uh, innovativeness are still very much uh, uh, present also in our uh, celebrations. Um, and sometimes it makes me a bit cynical because I think, well, it's, it, it is kind of a propaganda. It's kind of, it, it's kind of, uh, it's, it's a, a certain kind of rhetoric trying to, to connect us to this waterway. 
But on the other hand, I think it is what I, I saw in the celebration and also with interviews I had with people uh, for our podcast that we have made uh, uh, for the celebration, that it also has a meaning for a ritual, for community, for collective identity. And um, I think it, it helps us to think about reinvented traditions and transitions. So there's always an element about traditions, but also about transitions that is invented. Um, but it, it is also important to keep in mind that, uh, well, that, that it, it, it is invented, but it can also be very meaningful. So I'll skip my conclusions. You can come to me for these and I will thank you for your attention. Thank you.